Hello. Hey, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm sorry about um the other days, the time hello. zone, the hello. time zone difference. How you doing? You all right? Uh, I'm I'm all right. How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Um, uh, so I wanted to pick back up where we left off because the call, you know, I didn't realize it was only 25 minutes. So I wanted to ask you some other questions. Answer them however comfortable you feel, okay? Okay. Okay. So we left off and we were discussing um, that recording. So there was a recording that was sent to you with Amari and Cora, and it sounded like they were having a conversation. Um, and you were getting ready to tell me who sent it, the, the recording to you. Um yeah. Because you believe that this individual may or may not be wanting to help you in your case. So can you go into that a little bit further? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, Cora sent it to me. Cora sent it to you? Yeah. Why do you think she sent it to you? Um, I think it was the idea of, uh, like I said, I questioned what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, what was being said? Like, I didn't know what I was fighting. Like, what the hell? You know? Yeah. Uh. So she sent that to me. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that she did it because she believes you're innocent? Um, that's what I believe this this one, this whole time. You know, um, I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because she's your wife of twelve years. She's inclined right. to believe you. Um, that's probably in the same notion as all of the calls. So Cora was institutionalized. She went to a mental health care facility. You know that. And she's left you several voicemails while she was in the facility. Um, when she was in the, when she was in the facility, did you, other than the voicemails, were you able to talk to her while she was there and basically help her with her mental health or um, get an understanding as to why she was even there? Um, I was able to talk to her, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of, uh, check on her, see how, you know, what was going on, you know, with her and all that stuff. Yeah. I, and, uh, so yeah, I was able to talk with her. Yeah. Um, she, one of the voicemails she had left you while she was in the facility stated that, um, and I'm quoting this from Cora herself. She stated that it wasn't your fault. That it was trauma's fault. Do you remember that voicemail? About what? Um, Vague. Nah, it was a lot of voicemail, so I'm not. I'm not really sure. Yeah. And one of the voicemail. I'm going to try to just get into it a little more detail because the voicemail is really interesting, right? Because she states, "None of this was your fault. This was trauma's fault. Like trauma has caused basically this shockwave into your family, and." Just trying to use simple application to it. it. It sounded like she believed in your innocence. Um, that's like I said. I, I believe that the whole time that that she believed in my innocence. I mean, it was just the on the other side to that was just the, you know the reason that I'm even in here was because uh, she called uh, made a call. So I, I you know I kind of I kind of you know vary with how that looks, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you believe me and then, you know, at the same token, make a call. So, I, you know, like I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't know. When you say make a call, who did Cora call? Uh, from my understanding, uh, it was it was her call that uh, got everybody involved as far as CPS and uh, I guess the police department and all that kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think... Like when Cora, when things happen, does she tend to call her mother to like help her with things or does she call her father? Who does she call in relation to like when something bad happens? Um, she, does she, would she normally call you? I mean, I was her go-to person. Mm -hmm. I mean, our entire marriage, you know, so most of the time it's me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and we brainstorm and figure out how we, you know, what we need to do from whatever the, the need is, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So so when you say that Cora made the call, tell me about how she found out about these charges. Did she ever tell you, like, how they came about? Like, how did they come about? 
Uh, well, yeah, uh, like I know you asked me uh, the last call we had about our history, so mm-hmm. I kind of thought about it. Like I said, I, um, one, I, I wanted to get some more information about you and know yeah. exactly, because we didn't really get a chance to even introduce ourselves. No, we didn't, because the call. Uh, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so that, that night that everything uh, occurred, was it was really, uh, like I said, they just got back from this trip. Mm-hmm. Um you know, like I said, everything was ordinary in the sense that, uh, from my understanding, uh, Amara didn't want to leave California. She wanted to stay some more time, but school is starting. So, of course, she's having a fit. And, you know, her and her cousin are kind of like sister cousins. That's what we used to call them. <laughs> so, they, you know, they would get on each other's nerves and stuff. So, a lot of the things didn't seem out of the ordinary. You know, she was up and down, uh, I guess, during the trip didn't want to go home, so when she came home, you know, that's something we talked about, you know, I was like, you know, what's going on, like, why are you acting like that, you know, having dad talk, you know, mm-hmm. um, and one of the ongoing conversations we've had that we had that night was uh, about her up and down mood swings, and so um, Cora talked to me, she said, look, I've been talking about this for years, I think we need to get her checked out, because mm-hmm. uh, her bio mom suffered from uh, bipolar schizophrenia. Wow. And so, uh, you know, I've always been her advocate. So I was like, you know, maybe, maybe that's something to look into. At this point, I'm agreeing with her. And um, after talking with her again, she finally says, you know, yeah, you know, I just wanted to stay some more time type stuff. Um, like I said, after I, you know, talked with her about it. And then, um, like I said, uh, Cole went to uh, my office. I talked with her. I talked with Amari. I said, hey, you know, look, you know, kind of having these mood swings, having this talk with her, like I said, you know, one-on-one at this point, you kind of having these mood swings, you know, me and your mom are concerned. Uh, you know, we really are thinking about, you know, you know, looking for some help. Mm-hmm. That was the conversation. And like I said, so uh, I guess uh, uh, Cora calls her to my office. They talk for a second. And um, that's kind of when I found out uh, that uh, these allegations were made. So, so they um, were made that night after the trip. Mm-hmm. And what did you do? Same night. Um, I immediately uh, well, I, I went back there because I heard I heard loud talking or uh, you know crying, and I went back there. I was like, you know, checking because that's what I do. You know, <laughs> why you know. So I'll go back there and check, and then uh, they're they're both crying, uh, and they look at me, and she's saying, like, you know, you did this. I'm like, what do you mean? And that's exactly what I said. I said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And then uh, that's immediately when Cora gets up, and they leave. But I'm like, well, what's going on? What are you talking about? Like, now I'm like, what the hell is going on? Uh, they leave, uh, and I'm stuck there at the house, and so... Uh, that's when I find out, you know, what, what everything was going, you know, that was going on as far as allegations. Mm -hmm. Did you, did she text you while she was gone to tell you what it was that Amari had claimed? Uh, it was, uh, she said, uh, that same night before they left, like I said, when I was asking what's going on, she said, uh, uh, that, uh, she said that you touched her. And so I was like, you know, that's, yeah, you know. Like, I'm looking at her now, like, well, what's, what you, what's going on? Like, what are you saying? And so that's, there was no time for conversation really after that. It was, it was up and gone. Uh, and so I already, I already knew what was going on at that, that time. So uh, that's when I understood what was going on. Got you. And basically, from then on, really, I mean, based off of everything that I've seen from then on, and and from hearing from those voicemails, Cora was really trying to help compile data for you to for you to exonerate you. That's what it looked like. It was a lot of collecting of stuff. It was a lot of um, voicemails. It was a lot. Uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. Right. So so that's where it's just so unusual because we haven't heard from her. You know. Have you? talk to her while you've been in Ellis County? 
No. So no letters, no calls from Cora, nothing. Nothing. Okay. You know, like yeah. I said, I'm I'm here, so I really don't know what to think. So, you know, I figured I, you know, I, I cut all my ties because you know all my ties have been cut anyways. Uh, and and like I said, I really didn't know what to think. So mm -hmm. I'm here. You know, I'm here. So I don't. What am I? What am I supposed to think? Yeah. You know? And well, when you were first arrested, you were arrested in Grand Prairie. Um, at any time in, while you were in Grand Prairie, did you talk to Cora? Um, I called her. I called her uh, when I got locked up. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, uh, I called her when I got locked up. And what did she say? Do you remember the call? Uh, she just said, "I'm so sorry." Uh, I told. Her, I said, I, "I said I'm locked up because uh, really I was expecting all of this to be over." Yeah. Uh, I hadn't heard anything from anybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I was expecting this to be over. So, like I said, I, I when I got, you know, like mind you, I had a uh, visitation with my son. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the separation and divorce. Mm -hmm. So you know, I figured it was only right that I check in because I feel I'm supposed to be visiting my son soon. Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I made that call, and all she said was, I'm so sorry. And that was it? That was it. Wow. Um, at any time after these allegations happened, um, did you did you see Amari at all? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And now I want to ask you another question. I want to pivot just a little bit. So, you get accused they come home from los angeles you get accused that night and then that's kind of where everything deteriorates when where were you when that occurred were you in your home in um ellis county or were you staying uh still staying with the jakes and their guest home when these allegations no, came no, about we, yeah we uh at the time we had our own home okay and how long did you live there prior to these allegations not even a month not even a month and how did you acquire the home? Did you and Cora purchase the home? Was it gifted to you? I mean, do you remember? Yeah, it, it wasn't. It was no, it wasn't gifted. Okay, so you you got a mortgage, you purchased the home. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then you don't know what happened to the home after you after the allegations, right? Because I think both of you and Cora left the home, correct? Like, I said, I, I, like uh. It was uh, for her. I, I believe it was temporary. It was temporary for her to leave the house. Um, Why do you say that? Because I don't. I, like I said, she she came back after that. I had visitation with my son, so I knew that she was still there. Uh, they left that night for some time mm -hmm. and came back. I I left. I'm sorry about that. There's someone at my someone door. Someone is at the front door. Um. We just ignore that. Okay, so you left. Well, there is there is um, evidence to believe that she stayed at the home quite a while after you had left. Um, I'm not entirely sure as to why, but she did. Um, she did. Um, now, where she's staying now, there's no we have no idea of that, right? That's her private business. Um, but she did stay. Um, and the reason why I ask you about that is because the nature of the home, just being that you were only there for so little bit of time before everything kind of just like blew up. You understand what I mean? Um, it's just, it just seems unusual. So I want to, while we have a little bit of time left, um, I wanted to, uh, ask about, did you ever get any details after these uh, allegations came out and you had got your divorce attorney did you get any details about where these um um these allegations came from because while reading your indictment it stated um one of one of the incidents you don't have to go into detail about it but one of the incidents occurred um at the jake's home and then um or two of the incidents occurred at the jake's home in their their guest home that one occurred in your home in ellis county when you guys moved out have you had you had any time to read the full indictment yourself from Ellis County 
Um, I haven't. You haven't? No. How, how have you not? It's. <laughs> uh, they've given me, like I said, I, I, I've been given one, uh, but it's not in, it's not very detailed. Um, it just tells me what the uh, allegations are mm -hmm. um, and the charges. Uh, it's not very detailed, though. Um, um, and uh, that's really all I got right now. So, um, okay, one I haven't even spoken with an, uh, an attorney. You're the, there is an attorney on your case. I just want to make that clear. That's not something that has to be hidden. You do have a, a public defender on your case. Um, I forget what his name is. But yeah, he, I do have one on my case. And he did file for a motion for discovery. So he has collected quite a bit of evidence um, okay. coming from the prosecutors in your case. And from the top of my head, it includes um, a psych evaluation from Amari. Three body cam footages, one from Sarita Jakes, two from Cora Jakes, um, photos from the guest home, um, the, the Jakes guest home, emails and voice notes. So they didn't describe what they were. It's just that's what they are. So your attorney does have those and you should know that he has those and you should be privy to being able to see them, even though you you may or may not want that attorney on your case that evidence is yours and you have every right to see it um high profile attorney probably one of the best of the best that at least that i that at least i know of so she is working right now to get all of that information for you so yeah so i mean i i just have to i'm looking at the the your case is right in front of me so i'm looking at the details of your case um it's just i just find it very unusual that uh, Cora would continue to go to kind of go th through with all of this knowing that she was also helping you on the back end I just it's just very unusual to me it is you know call a spade a spade yeah. she, she has to believe something she believes something one way or the other and it's just unusual that she would stop helping you and the question we have, I have to ask myself right as somebody who investigates these things as to why because that's important right it's important to understand that and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of like one, one of the things I told uh, uh, my, uh, I told someone else uh, was that uh, this is not the first time that this has been brought up as mm -hmm. far as an allegation like this. Um, one of the biggest things we had, well, that was one of the earlier things we had when we adopted the party early on was this against someone else. Mm hmm um, within the first few months mm -hmm. of fostering, uh, we had something like this come up. With uh, where she was staying prior, uh, correct, to her adoption? Correct, correct, correct. So, um, that was one of those things that kind of, when this came up, kind of shook me a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, this is not new. This is something that's happened before. Um, so it made me question a whole lot of things with that as well. Uh, and that's why I said what I said, like, since early on, when we adopted her, one of the biggest things we had was her and her being, and, uh, and one, telling the truth was always an issue. Mm. Even in our, during our marriage, we had big issues with that. Yeah. Uh, so much so that we even threatened to put her in a boarding home. Because of the lying. Yeah. It was, like, ridiculous. Asking what color the sky would be is, was, was always different. You know, mm -hmm. um, and does Cora know? Does was Cora aware of her her lying spouts? Oh, absolutely. That's that's what I'm saying to you. This is one of our discussions throughout our, throughout our marriage. Mm -hmm. So she had an. an did you yeah. ever catch her in a very big lie? That what caused you to want to put her in a boarding school? Was she lying about boys? Was she lying about homework? Uh, no, it was just everything from the simplest of did you take a bath to you know, did you do your homework? Did you clean up? Did, you know, you know, just the, the responsibilities we would hold her to. Asking just the simplest of things, and it was the most irritating things, especially for her. Mm -hmm. And like I said, for me, I always tried to be the one giving the grace, uh, you know, in those types of settings and moments. Mm -hmm. I was the one giving the grace, trying to work out, you know, whatever understandings, but there were also a lot of times where it was like both of us frustrated at this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, 
there was an instance um, where Amari had some boy came to your home. And I think you remember that a boy came to your home in the wee hours of the morning that was caught on your uh, home camera system. And Amari came to you because you were questioning her about that. I remember that video. And she stated that Michelle Loud sent the boy to her home. When she told you that, did you believe she was lying then? No, she didn't say Michelle Loud. I don't know who told you, but um, but he, she did say it was, uh, he said he was looking for a Michelle. He said he was looking for a Michelle. Did you yeah. think she was lying? Do you think the boy was lying? It was the weirdest scenario. I don't even know. Like, um, it just so happened to be a night that I didn't set the alarm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a, a neighborhood like that where we had those issues. But nevertheless, I didn't set the alarm. And um, it's just it to be you know, just to make sure we are clear. There is a video that I do have of Amari um, stating that the boy was sent to the house by Michelle Loud. And in the video, you're mm. you you sound perplexed. You're just like, OK what you know so those are the claims that she made so i'm asking and our time is running out so we'll probably have to extend this but the question i'll ask you is at that moment did you believe she was lying i didn't know what to think okay